It's time to rank the managers. Welcome to a brand new tier list video, everybody. And today we are going to be ranking the 1.3 hires and heroes, instance managers, and street managers on the tier list video. I'm going to start by ranking the street managers in a rapid fire style, and then I'm going to spend more time on the instance managers. Let's get started with the street managers. Duck Shuffler. Fun, easy, very simple boss. A great way to start people off at seeing the fun new bosses. I love the duck cheat. I love all of his cheats. I love his personality. He's a great starting off point for all the newcomers coming into Clash A tier. Deep Diver, a red light, green light fight. Not a huge fan of those. That's kind of why I don't really play the boiler in TTR anymore. I just don't really like the idea of red light, green light. It's not very fun. It's not very engaging. I think this one needs a lot of free work. C tier. Gatekeeper, this boss sucks. I straight up do not like this boss. It has some things going for it, but barely anything. I really think it needs a lot of reworks. D tier, Bell Ringer. I actually kind of like the Bell Ringer. I like him more than a lot of people do. I think it's a nice balance. You know, it's a little repetitive, but it's a nice balance of going into all your gag choices and making sure he doesn't overheal the cogs. It's fun. I like it. B tier. Mouthpiece. This one's kind of generic and it's cheesable, but it has very few cheats. It just kind of feels bland. It feels like it's missing something. C tier. Firestarter. A very solid, reasonably difficult boss for people who are mostly getting into the Berg and stuff like that. Not too crazy difficult at all, but just a, a nice little boss to fight whenever you're feeling bored. B tier. Tree Killer. This one feels great to fight. I like him a lot. He has a funny personality, a funny design. His music's pretty good, and it's just, it's a, it's a, it's a very satisfying level of Street Manager difficulty. A tier. And last but not least, we have the Feather Better. I once hated it, but now I realize that it's quite nice having a Street Manager that you actually have to kind of think and strategize and plan for. I once hated it, but it's now my favorite, so it's going right into the top of S tier. That makes our Street Manager tier list. I wanted to get these out of the way quickly so that I can spend all my time on the Instance Managers, which will be on a separate tier list because street managers are fun, but they do not compare to the quality level that you see in the instance managers. These are the managers that clearly got the most amount of love, the most amount of cheats, the most amount of presentation. We're going to rank these on their own list. So we're going to start get started right now with the pre-thinker. The pre-thinker is a great introduction for new players to fight their very first instance manager. He has some cool cheats. I like the idea that he can like sense your gags and know what you're about to do. And he adjusts. I've always loved that in video games. And it's so cool to finally see something like that in Toontown. He's pretty straightforward. And as far as replayability, ability goes, eh, it's a little boring after you kind of get the shenanigans and the shtick. I have to be honest with myself here and recognize that this is a relative list. So while the pre-thinker is a cool boss, I think in the relativity of all these bosses, he goes into C tier. Ryan, look out! He's the baseline. Nothing wrong with it. It's just kind of, it's there. It's, 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 it's the baseline. That's really the best way I can put it. Pre-thinker, C tier. Ah, yes, the Rainmaker. I loved this fight. It knocked me off my socks. It made me tear up a little bit at the end of it because it just is not something you would expect out of Toontown. This is a tone that we've never really seen in this game series before, so it just completely just caught me off guard. Now, I will say, the writing in Rainmaker isn't something entirely profound. Some people have, like, teased me for crying in Rainmaker, but... You know, it's not something crazy profound. I just, I was mostly surprised by the fact that this tone was in Toontown. It just, it really caught me off guard. As for the fight itself, it has a nice balance. I love the amount of phases there are. The music in this boss is, ooh, it's juicy. It's wonderful. It's as, it's as moist as the Rainmaker's environment itself. It's amazing. It's amazing. I loved this boss when I first fought it. I still think it's one of the stronger ones. I'm putting Rainmaker into A tier. That's right, she's going into A tier. All the haters can cry about it. Witch Hunter. Hmm, so what do I say about Witch Hunter? Honestly, this fight's kind of forgettable. I don't know what it is about this fight. I think it's just the fact that it's the boss of Ye Olde Toontown, which I always kind of was iffy on as a playground in general. I just, the theming of the Dungeons and Dragons and like the classical medieval thing was not always my cup of tea. As for the Witch Hunter fight, I just think that there's not enough things that stand out that make it unique. Prethinker's bare bones and he's the first fight, so it's kind of, it's kind of expected that he would be kind of approachable and just nothing crazy going on. But this Witch Hunter guy, while he has some difficulty, while he has some cool stuff happening, I just think it lacks so much that it could have had. When this update was first being teased and we saw the ladder, I was really hoping we'd have a dragon cog, a dragon manager at the top of the tower. It would have been so fitting for the medieval times on the top of the tower. It just, I was really let down by the lack of dragon. All I see when I see the Witch Hunter is just a big wig with a virus mask and a funny little hat. That's all he is. I, I think his design is underwhelming. I think the fight is underwhelming. The music's great. 
but all around, I can't put it any higher than a D tier, which I don't think is that controversial. Are there any really like diehard witch hunter fans out there who are gonna be like, why would you do that? God, that was obnoxious. Multi Slacker is a fun one. I have a soft spot in my heart for Cathal. He's the VP son, his face is a TV. Get out of here. He's awesome. I love his design. His music is absolutely great. The fight is very nice. I like it. It's 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 well put together. It's fun. The replayability is pretty nice. I like how you have three different formants that spice things up. It's it's nice. It's nicely paced. I just I like it. A lot of people tell me that Multi Slacker is overrated and that I love him too much. Screw you. I don't like him as much as Rainmaker because of the story aspects and everything. I think he's really good. I think he belongs right into B tier and you're gonna have to live with that. Now, when it comes to the big four, I'm actually gonna spend most of my time talking about these guys. I'm gonna break down every aspect of the fight and really d dive into things, starting with Major Player. Now, as many of you know, when I first did Major Player, I was blown away by the presentation of this fight. Just him coming in here, just like through the elevator in the second phase where you just, you thought he, he exploded. Your emotions are swelling up. You have the Mr. Hollywoods that go boom, boom, boom. Just the presentation is incredible on this fight. It's astronomically amazing. The match mini is hilarious. It's great. It's fun. I love the design. The music in this fight is just powerful. And I wouldn't want it any other way for the MML boss. I mean, it's the music theme playground. We need a music theme boss that has very good music in the background. But all that being said, all that being said, I don't love Major Player as much as I thought I did. You see, when I've reapproached the fight, I've played it a couple times, I found myself just being a little bit underwhelmed. Once that kind of shock and awesome, amazing spectacle was like over with, once I was used to that, the fight itself got a little bit formulaic and repetitive. And while this boss was really hard for me when I first played it, I've kind of felt it not maintain that difficulty very much and it's just i don't know it just lacks what i'm looking for i don't like the way the other cogs are incorporated into the fight they feel really annoying to deal with and the fact you usually don't even deal with them at all but this fight is beautifully designed i have to stress that it's wonderful it's a great fight however replayability leaves me wanting more and because of that major player is going to go into b tier but because of all his strengths he does beat out multi slacker for me Plutocrat is cool. Haha, <laughs> get it? No, but seriously, this fight's pretty awesome. I love the five different satellite managers that'll change every time you go through, which kind of gives the fight a new life every time you enter. It's not super repetitive. It's nice to balance all the different sheets. There's a lot of mechanics in this fight that feel good to pull off. I love shattering cogs to get the big damage. I love shattering the satellites to just explode. And I like the, the bubble burst. I love, there's so much that goes into this fight. It's super cool. Also, something that a lot of people don't really talk about is that the Plutocrat is the only boss that sort of has red light, green light, but not really. He has phase transitions that go throughout the fight. Rather than whittling down his HP that pushes him into a phase where he stays there forever, you're kind of switching between two different modes as you go. I think Deep Freeze is a really good sheet. It keeps you on your toes. I like how the rewards are disabled for that. It's great, it's solid. I have very little complaints about Plutocrat. In fact, I can't really think of any at the top of my head. And no complaints may make you assume that I'm putting him into S tier, but like I said, this is a relative list and I think he belongs nowhere above the top of A tier for me. <sighs> oh boy. All right, here we go. Chainsaw Consultant. Now, out of every manager on this list, this is the one that I am the most strongly opinionated on. This is the one I'm most mixed on. This is the one that I have so many feelings, so many thoughts, so many things to say. How could I say all the things that are on my brain in such a short amount of time? I don't know, but I'll try. He's really hard. Really hard. And even when you play him multiple times, you come back, and even when you have a great knowledge of the fight, he's still hard which is good. We loved the litigation team when it came out because it was so earth shatteringly difficult for us because we weren't used to anything like it. It brought us the challenge and it was awesome. However, once the litigation team was out for so long, we started to just crush them so easily, effortlessly, that we could just go into overclock CLOs and just mindlessly defeat those managers. But Chainsaw is not like that. You can fight him over and over again and he's still pretty tough to deal with. The gag's missing. We'll talk about that. Everything that can happen in that fight just keeps you on your toes. It keeps you engaged. It's scary. Usually I let someone else guide because I just get way too annoyed and frustrated guiding that fight, which leads me to the negatives. I think Chainsaw 
uh, it crosses the line sometimes to, for me, I feel. You have to consider the fact that this is Toontown. It's a game made for like all ages and just, I don't know, something about this chainsaw just, he's hes a bit a pain in the ass if you haven't noticed, I don't know. He's just, he, I, he pisses me off. The, the amount of times gags miss in that fight is ridiculous. It's just, I, I get angry, okay? I get angry. That fight is one I avoid because it just, it's so just draining and frustrating and it's just, it feels a, a bit unfair sometimes. When people ask you what manager I would like to do and I wanna choose from all the pool of them, I would probably choose Plutocrat over Chainsaw Consultant. I'd probably choose a, a bunch of different ones over Chainsaw Consultant because I just don't wanna have to deal with the stress. However, this boss fight is probably the greatest designed Toontown fight in history. It doesn't really get better than this. As frustratingly difficult as it is, and when I do think it does cross the line a bit, Chainsaw Consultant is a masterpiece of a boss fight, and I can't let my own little opinions and my stamina when it comes to Toontown managers deplete what is a absolute wonderful experience, incredibly designed boss fight. I bet this is gonna surprise a lot of people because everyone thought I was gonna rank this really low. Chainsaw Consultant goes into S tier, no questions asked. Mr. Graham Pacer, oh, I love the pace center. Oh my gosh. Fun fact when the pace center was first revealed with Multi Slacker, I was like, I love Multi Slacker's design. Pace center's design, huh? I thought it was weird looking. I didn't really get the whole bike helmet thing, the, the double skin tone thing. It was just. His design didn't really appeal to me when I first saw it. But then I saw him with his Cellbot suit on, which complemented all of his other gear. I saw his 3D model, and that's when I was sold. I really like this guy's design. But that's just his appearance. Let's talk about this amazing boss battle. This thing keeps you on your toes from beginning to end. You can even choose to overclock it if you want, if you want to go max speed the entire time. It's an incredibly simple concept. The battle just gets faster. You use the gag that it asks you to, and that's why I love it so much. It doesn't overcomplicate things. It doesn't throw a bunch of crazy things to memorize at you. It is at its core telling you exactly what to do, but it's also massively skill-based. I feel that pace setter more than any other manager comes down to skill. And when you die in pace setter, it is the most manager that is skill issue when you die. That was a sentence. It seriously doesn't feel like I get screwed over by RNG like in Chainsaw Consultant or some crazy weird cheat comes out of nowhere. It really just boils down to, are you on top of things? If you're not, that's your fault, you lose. This is also probably the only manager where you're gonna be able to go as many times as you want, but you still have to pay attention and engage with the fight every single time. You can't just go for the 20th pace setter and just like let someone else guide while you like browse Twitter. You can do that with basically all the other managers, but with this one, you have have to be present and that's awesome and the thing that seals the deal for me the cream of the crop the number one thing i love about this fight is the music oh 1998 toontown dance mix pacer test the cutscenes everything is so good i will never ever get tired of doing pace setters they're awesome wonderful cream of the crop i'm so glad clash saved the best for last Pace setter, as you can probably tell, goes in the top of S tier. And that is the end of the Corporate Clash manager tier list.